Funding for Greater Chattanooga is provided by EPB Fiber Optics, Unum, and Baylor School. It's been wet in the southeast for forever. Um, and we've got all these different kinds of rocks in the southeast, these different kinds of physiographic provinces. And you have different kinds of rocks, you have different kinds of rivers. All these things have allowed evolution to create just this mosaic of incredible aquatic creatures, both large and small. Especially in the South, people are really proud of their cultural heritage. But we have a natural heritage here in the South that's unrivaled anywhere else in the world where the leaves fall off the trees, the temperate world. The Southeastern United States, where we're at, is actually the hot spot for freshwater fish biodiversity, uh, second only to the Amazon River system. Right now, we're at the beginning of a sixth mass extinction event um, and it's being caused by humans. This is the first time that we know of in the history of the world that one species has caused a mass extinction event. And here we've just got humans altering the landscape so much that things are disappearing at an alarming rate. You know I think that it's gonna have to be humans that fix the problems as well. Our mission at the Tennessee Aquarium Conservation Institute is to try to conserve aquatic habitats and the animals that live in them. And we do that through uh, original science, try to reintroduce animals that have disappeared, and uh, most importantly, outreach to the public and policymakers. We're just trying to protect this masterpiece because you're not gonna find most of these animals here in the Southeast anywhere else in the world and we should really embrace that and celebrate that. Southern Appalachian Brook Trout is the only native trout species to the southeast United States and to Tennessee. Um, it is distinct from its northern cousin, the northern strain brook trout, and it is, um, I think, the most beautiful of all the trouts. It might be biased. They're a cold water fish and we think they populated the Southern Appalachians back during uh, the end of the last ice age, 15,000 years ago. It lives in the Cherokee National Forest and the um, Smoky Mountain National Park. And back in the 1890s, that was clear cut completely. And then again, um, it was clear cut in the 1970s um, into the 1980s. The trees in the park provided the necessary shade to the river, so the water heated up, but it also caused a lot of what we call sedimentation, where silt and dirt and everything from the river banks that didn't have the tree roots to hold it into place was washed into the river. They need clear water uh, to see each other, to find their food, to reproduce, and especially to lay their eggs. With the Clean Water Act in 1972, there were now laws in place to regulate uh, just massive clear cuts and you know going right over stream. Now they've recovered from an ecological point of view. But a second problem is non-native trout species. There were two species of non-native trout that were introduced and are still being introduced into different areas um, for sport fishing, for angling, and that's the rainbow trout from the Pacific Northwest and the brown trout from Europe. But like any invasive species, they're not native to the ecosystem and so they are going to have a negative effect and so they're only in less than 20% of their historical range. So um, it's a fish that needs our help. Uh, it needs a little boost from us to get it back to where it once was. We have about 300 what we call fry. They're about an inch, an inch and a half long. We want them to be about two inches. Um, we had to chop up their food pretty fine because they were still pretty small. Um, but now in the past month they've gotten big enough that they're just eating whole blood worms. 
And it's good too, the quicker they start eating bigger food, the bigger they're gonna get too. So we are trying to grow them as big as we can before we release them next month. Um, you know, the, the bigger they are when we put them in the stream, uh, the better chance that they're gonna have to survive. They are about seven months old. We had spawned them in middle of November. Helping out with any animal is, you know, of course, a great feeling, but something that's uh, impaired or endangered in the wild, you get to think of um, just the overall contribution you're giving to back to the ecosystem. It's just really fulfilling to giving it back. trip um, so we're gonna have to put some pure oxygen in the bags with the fish is kind of just what they do at the pet store um, when you get your goldfish okay. they uh, yeah just water and oxygen and you just bag them up it's always good to get them out I don't know there's always kind of like I'm gonna hold your breath until you get them out all righty let's get these babies in the car We're going to Little Stony Creek in the Cherokee National Forest. Um, it's near Elizabethton, Tennessee. In order to have a successful reintroduction, you need the habitat looking good. Number two, you need the invasive uh, rainbow trout gone, and they have been removed. And then number three, you need some kind of barrier in place to not allow the rainbow trout or brown trout to get back up into the brook trout habitat. Those are the conditions necessary, and that's what Little Stony Creek is. Excited. This is, you know, everything that we've been working for. Um, this is the goal. So it's really nice to see all the year's hard work come to fruition in this moment. Water is life. Without fresh water, humans don't exist. We all live downstream of someone else. And whatever that person upstream does directly affects the people downstream. It, you know, it's sort of this hidden world that you don't really just, you know, you walk outside and you see birds flying and sometimes you see, you know, deer by the side of the road. You know, we see that every day. But what we don't see every day is if you go and you stick your face in a river, just how teeming with life they are, all kinds of different life. It's not just beautiful and it's not just interesting, it's also absolutely critical for all life on this earth to, you know, to have a healthy ecosystem. That, in, that includes me and it includes you and it includes all of us. For the health of humans, we need healthy water. Healthy rivers equal healthy people and healthy communities. They're all tied together.